believe that as Christians, our, our main responsibility is to be obedient to His presence is to be obedient to what God is saying to us. Um, sometimes we can listen to popular opinion or we can see what's going on and we, we, we try and find the answers. But I pray that you, um, not so much as a member of this church, but as a Christian, find God's voice in it. The best thing you can do is find God's voice in everything that's going on. Um, and and uh, I, I love the, f- the series that we're doing at the moment. Uh, this is part three. Uh, if you missed the last two, or oh no, part four, I think. No, part three. Yeah, never mind. I was right. Part three, so Pastor Sam um, started it a few weeks ago, and then um, how good was Pastor Tede last week? Oh, man. Uh, it's always a good Sunday when we unleash Pastor Tede to, to preach. Um, she's just phenomenal, and she, she's got a real good articulation of the Bible. Um, and oftentimes when I'm struggling with things, I can talk to her, and her wisdom comes out. I'm like, man, not just a pretty face, that one. She's uh, she's amazing. Um uh, <laughs> um, I can say that because she's my wife. Um, but I want to, I want to, um, I want to talk uh, a little bit around a topic called the war within. The war within. If you're a note taker, write it down. The war within. Um, in this, in the series called Colliding Worlds, uh, there's a, there's a real turmoil going on in people's worlds right now. Um, and for those of you who don't know the backstory of this um, sermon series, um, we. We as Equippers Churches believe in significant ministry flowing out of significant relationship. That's not just at a local level, but that's at a national and a global level. So a lot of, or all of the pastors that pastor Equippers Churches are all my friends, and we are constantly on the phone together, um, just, you know, shouting your praises and saying, man, we saw breakthrough this week in someone's life, you know, having Nigel and Michaela on the couch last week, testifying to good, the goodness of God and breakthrough in their life. You know, that's, that's the testimonies we get to share with one another each week, and we also talk about different sermon series, and one, Colliding Worlds was one of those ones that was thrown around um, just before Shout, and a lot of the other churches jumped on it, and they were like, man, this is going to be awesome, but I didn't feel in my spirit it was right to do it at that time. I knew it was going to be a season that we needed at some point, um, and it was, and I had actually... Um, set up a whole new series um, for this month, but just while we were in the last lockdown, I really felt God say, now we need to bring in colliding worlds because um, as you know, what we're going through right now and the level restrictions and, and the, the mandatory vaccines and all of those sorts of things, how many know that in itself is a colliding world? Um, you know, that in itself. And, and I, I believe that all of us have got a war going on within us, uh, whether we're pro or anti or whatever's going on. I, I as a pastor, want to stand here and say, seek God first and all everything else will fall into place. Um, you know, I, I'm not the public person to try and tackle the, the big giants in the world on my, on my own, but I know that I can do great things when I've got God on my side. And so people say, oh, what's your stance? What's going on in your world? I say, well, I've just been hanging out with Jesus, um, and, and he's not sending me YouTube videos of all these conspiracies, um, you know, and all those sorts of things. But I'm going, okay, God, where's your voice in this? Where are you in this? Because, you know, whether you're going through sickness, whether you're going through a loss of job or a loss of house or, you know, all these things, that you can feel yourself there's a war going on on the inside. And how do you deal with that sort of stuff? Can I say you don't deal with it on your own? Point one, don't deal with stuff on your own. We're, we're designed to be in relationship firstly with God, but also with one another. The best thing you can do is have a conversation with what's going on in your world. Find a listener. Find someone that's just going to listen and, and allow you not to so much feel like you're venting, but just to allow the weight to come off you and, and allow someone to bring wisdom into your life. Man, the right person listening to the, and, and giving you wisdom can unlock you, can bring you so much freedom, but the wrong person how many times have we told the wrong person and you felt worse off talking to that person than you have actually felt freedom? Um, hopefully not many of us have, have had that side of it. But the war, of, war within, it's not just what you're feeling right now because you're hungry. Um, maybe you didn't eat breakfast. There's a war going on thinking, I need food. I'm not talking about that sort of war within. But I want to start here in Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. Uh, I'm going to read in the, um, in the New Living Translation. Uh, it says this, the sinful nature wants to do evil, 
which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. Man, what a promise from God that there's a war going on and it's constantly going on. At no point does it ever stop. I, I find in my own life when I don't have the inner t- turmoil and when I don't have the struggle, maybe I've been a little bit comfortable. Maybe I've actually taken a back seat to, to different things and I haven't felt that tension because I'm not actively doing good or I'm not actively doing what God is intending me to do. You know, sometimes we feel like life's comfortable, life's sweet now, I don't have any troubles, but I, feel, I believe that's, that's a dangerous place to be. Because we can actually get really stagnant. And how many know uh, without uh, banks and and parameters, a river that doesn't have the banks, it turns into a swamp. The moment there's no flow, there's no there's no um, you know activity going on. There's stagnancy. There's there's a, a, a space of water that looks good, but man, when you get close, it maybe starts to smell, and and it starts to grow things that aren't meant to be growing in that space. And sometimes we feel. Uh, like if we actually, you know, the Bible puts it, if we, if, we, um, if we cast off restraint, that's when we perish. We, we actually don't um, hold the disciplines in our life. We, we start to perish. We cast off those things. And the Bible says that's a dangerous place to be because we can actually be um, stagnant in our, in our flesh but also our spirit. And so the, the war within really is the space called from the flesh versus the spirit. And I hopefully you've, you, you know a little bit about your, your Bible and, and, and Christianity enough to know that we're not waging war against flesh and blood, but we are against principalities and powers. And sometimes I think if God just gave us spiritual goggles and we looked around town, it would freak us out a little bit because we could see the activity, not because we're intimidated by what the enemy's doing, but because we're actually not aware so much about in the spiritual realm of what the enemy is trying to sow. And the thing is, if God gives you the ability to see that, it's not to be intimidated and fearful to go, oh, no, this big thing. No, because we're on the, on the winning side. We've been given authority to actually stamp on these things. To, to you know, the moment that the, um, Lucifer was cast out of, um, out of heaven, he was, he was under our feet. We were, we were put above him. And so sometimes we get so fearful of what the enemy can do because he's got a big bark, but he's actually not that big. He's got a big bark. Have you ever heard a, a, a like Rottweiler or something really bark? But then you look over the fence and it's just a little chihuahua. <laughs> like I think that's what the devil going to look like. When we get to heaven and we're going to go, hey, God, can you just show me what he looks like? Like that's what I want to know. What does he actually look like? Because sometimes I can feel like he's this big beastie, like American bulldog, just ah. But then God's going to be like, yeah, that one. I'm like, oh, pass the chihuahua? No, no, the chihuahua, that's him. <laughs> sometimes we actually give him credit for, for more than he's capable of. The enemy is actually under our feet. And we need to know that the war within, we're not, we're not so much battling against the flesh. We're not battling against the things that are temporary. We're actually securing our eternity by dealing with things in the, in the spirit. <clears throat> um, our, our sinful nature, the, the, the moment we were born, we were born into a sinful world. You know, we could go down that track and, and look at Adam and Eve and where it all went wrong. But the, the fact of uh, the matter is we weren't there to say, hey, don't eat it. We weren't, we weren't there, but we were born into this, into this world now that is corrupt. We were born into, you know, my kids have, have been born into it even more, seems like even more of a corrupt world than I grew up in, and probably the same for you guys, since I'm just a toddler still. Um, you know, you can look back and think, man, the, the world is actually starting to fall apart in front of our eyes. You don't have to look very far. But our, our sinful nature, our humanity craves wrong. You know, you have to be intentional to actually stay healthy. You've got to, you've got to actively be, well, active. You've got to go to the gym, maybe not. You've just got to go, to the, go for walks and you've got to eat healthy. You've got to be intentional. Intentional, that's a new word. Put it down in the dictionary. You've got to be intentional about staying healthy, really. 
the moment that we, we stop trying to be healthy, then, then weight can start to pop on and all these sorts of things. How many know it's the same with health? You need to, to stay healthy is hard because there's so many sicknesses, there's so many illnesses out there that are coming to get you, and you have to stay, um, you have to be intentional, about, oh man, I'm going to keep saying that word, intentional about uh, staying healthy. It's the same with your marriage. <clears throat> See, no marriage, I, I believe, intends to divorce. When they're standing at the altar, there's no intention for them to go, hey, I commit to four years, and then it's all going to fall apart, and I'm not going to be able to handle it, but hey, I'll give you four years. No marriage starts out like that, but there's a war going on within that the enemy wants to separate you, because how many know when two or three are gathered, there he is, when, you know, two people together can put more to flight than one, you know, and you, you, can, you can start to see what God wants to do in, through, in and through relationship. But the enemy comes and he tries to get into that. See, no business starts up intending to go bankrupt. But there's a war going on that is trying to stop us from being all that God want us, wants us to be or do everything that he wants us to do. And so we've got to be actively aware of what's going on. It's not so much that you just wake up on Monday and not want to get up. There's a war going on that you've got to step up and go, okay, I love what um, Brendan was saying in, in um, prayer meeting this morning about how you guys have done communion every day. You know, they're, they're, they're choosing their day to actually have communion together to start their day right. And I think that's a discipline you put into your life so you can become aware and more aware of what God wants you to do, not just for life, but actually for today. Because I don't know if you know it, but God's got a big plan for your life, but he's also got a plan for today. Sometimes we focus on the big plan I'm going to be a rock star. I'm going to be out there. I'm going to do all this stuff. But then we're lazy today. And we don't do what God needs us to do today. Just take one step in the right direction. How many know all it takes is one step after the other and you can run a mile. You can get to where you need to be. But if you don't take the steps early, you're going to be still sleeping when everyone else is down the road. There's a war going on. I love this conversation that, um, that Jesus has uh, in John chapter 3 um, with, oh, I forgot his name. Hang on, I'll just turn there. John chapter 3, Nicodemus. Um, he has this conversation with Nicodemus, and, and he says this, because uh, there's this whole weird sort of concept and analogy that Jesus brings out. I, I say analogy, it's a parable. He, he talks about how, um, you know, you need to be born again to see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus is like mind blown. How do, how do I get back into my mum to be born again? And he says, no, you're, you're thinking about it in a fleshly way, but actually I'm talking about the spirit. And this conversation, this transaction takes place here in, in, in John chapter 3, verse 3. Uh, I think it came up on the board. It says this, Jesus replied to Nicodemus. He said, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. I've read that so many times, but just reading it in this light of, of, of a colliding world, of a war that's going on, <clears throat> It's say, Jesus is saying here that I'm not ever going to be able to see the kingdom of God, the spirit realm, unless I'm connected in the spirit. Sometimes as Christians, we can operate out of the flesh and think we're in a spiritual level, but we haven't prayed about it. We haven't even fasted about it. How many times have you fasted outside of just the church fast? <laughs> Because you need to do a three-day fast just to see some breakthrough, just to eliminate the distractions. It's not, a, it's not a marketing thing. The fast is not just, hey, let's do it all together and let's, let's seem like the church that fast. No, man, there's so many people in, sitting in this room that I know you need breakthrough. So as a church, we're believing that as we fast together, you're going to see your breakthrough. We believe we're not going to just talk about things. We're going to step into that breakthrough. We're going to access heaven. <clears throat> is a, a quote by Benjamin Franklin. It says, by failing to prepare, you prepare to fail. By failing to prepare, you prepare to fail. And it's the same with every single day. If you're not preparing by just opening up the word or even just having a conversation with God and thanking him that you're alive, it's almost like you're preparing for a day that's just not going to go right. 
I love the, the concept of, of tithing, how, how we give 10%, and, and it's a biblical principle that you should look into, um, not just because church needs your money, but because you need an open heaven over your life. Um, but I, I also see it in the moment of, of my time. I tithe my time, 10%. In the morning, I'm like, God, here's my 10%. Or here's, I, I try and keep the conversation open, but I try to get this discipline in my life that I start with Bible. And I say, okay, God, I'm focusing in on you. I need you today. What does today look like? Man, you wouldn't believe the conversations I've had since this traffic light system has come out. Like, I need Jesus, man. Like, the conversations I've had have made me want to just leave and not come back. Like, they're, they're, they're that bad. Because some people are crazy. I'm not going to be blunt. Like, it, it is. And I'm like, Jesus, I need you so much right now. Because my humanity, I'm, I'm going full-time kitchens and I'm not coming back. Like, like that's, that's the level that I can get to. Because my humanity is like, well, stuff you guys. But we're in this together. Like, I, I want to be someone that, that, that gets to heaven and God says, well done, good and faithful servant. Not, well, you tried. <laughs> well, here's where you went wrong. I want to be like, God, I spent every single day with you. And I want to live a life that is so godly. That is an example to young people. I want my kids to see me and think, I want to be like that. Not for any fame or anything other than my kids seeing and going, God, I want to be like that. You know, I think I'm doing a pretty good job at it, but it's, it's just how I started my life and how I'm going to continue it. Is I, I start it by saying, God, you know, I'm not at Nigel's level where my Bible um, streak is over the thousands on the Uversion app, but hey, we're getting there. <laughs> But if, if you're not the type to read the, the, the actual paper Bible, man, set alarms on your phone. The Uversion app on there can actually wake you up at quarter past six and you spend half an hour just reading and you can go onto the Bible app and it, it, it shows you videos of people that are encourage you and things like that. So you don't need to look far for encouragement, but you do need to wake up. You do need to wake up. Man, we've, we've, we've got a battle going on that's not so much flesh and blood, but it is about the spirit. See, we can be awake in our physical. We can be awake. You can be walking around like right now, but actually your spirit man can be just totally dead. And I, 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 I literally this morning when I was praying just before we came to, to practice this morning, I really felt like there were some spiritual defibrillators this morning. That it was like, you're alive on the outside, but God wants to shock your spirit, man. Because, man, you've allowed the enemy to take a foothold in your life too long. And it's time for the colliding world to actually, the spirit of the colliding world to take over. How many want that in their life? You know, all of us would say that, but it's going to take discipline. I love the, the slogan for, uh, I think it was Pantene Pro V back in the day. It won't happen overnight, but it will happen. <laughs> Why? Because you've got to work at it. It's not like God just miraculously switches a switch and everything's good. Like, you know, sometimes that happens for people that, that experience full-on breakthrough, broken addictions, I never went back. And we pray for those moments, but a lot of the time it's a, it's a daily step. You can get up there and say, man, I broke addictions. Oh, that's so God. God did an instant. No, I had to walk it out for four years. And it was a daily, it was a daily struggle. It was a daily battle, but I overcame it. And sometimes we pray for our addictions to be broken, and God doesn't do it instantly, and we're like, oh, maybe he doesn't work. Maybe it doesn't work for me. Maybe I need to do all these sorts of things, have my ducks in a row before God, you heal me. No, God doesn't work like that. He doesn't have a punishment system. He loves everyone. He doesn't love the person sitting next to you more than he loves you. But every one of us. <laughs> That's right. Because if that was the case, he'd love me way more than you. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> we need to actively work everything out. 
If you think about the gym, you've got to actively work on your physical body so you can stay in shape. It's the same with your spirit, man. It's the same with your spirit, man. If your spirit is skipping leg day, you're not going to get very far. Hey, you're not going to get very far, but you need to operate in the spirit. Man, if you, if you aren't like speaking in tongues regularly, get that spirit flowing. Because, man, the, the, when it says, uh, I can't remember the scripture, but it says, He who speaks in, uh, in the, well, your spirit language, it edifies yourself. The, the spirit edifies you. Man, sometimes I'm just like frustrated or I'm happy and I don't know what to pray, but I'm just like, and I'm just shouting like in my spirit language because it's edifying myself. I'm like having a spirit party by myself. Sometimes in my car on the way to work, I'm just like, okay, I'll just drive around the block one more time because I feel like, God, you're not finished with me yet. And I've, you know, got to get to work. But I just feel like, man, we've got to get to that space where our spirit man is just like real bulky and we're ready to take on any, any giant that comes our way. And uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5, it says this, We are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. Verse 4, we use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons. That's a good reminder. Don't just look for the closest things that you can see in your worldly view. Try and find God's weapons because they actually work. God's weapons work. Uh, We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. Teach them to obey Christ. You know, that's what I mean. We need to be actively teaching people to obey Christ. It's not so much about me living a Christian life and you being an observer and trying to figure out how you can do it. It's about me trying to teach you because I can't, I can't be at your workplace on Monday morning when you start getting persecuted. I can't come to your house when you start fighting with your spouse and things are getting rocky. I can't necessarily be in that space, but I can tell you that you're, 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 the battle that's going on is greater than the argument. There's, there's a tension that you're working with. The, the battle, the war that is within you is greater. But I want to tell you, you're on the winning side. You're on the winning side. And so can I encourage you? We're not fighting against humans. Uh, the, the biggest thing that frustrates me at the moment is the disunity within church around the vaccine stuff. Like I'm, I'm, I'm never going to use my... my um, my platform or anything to to try and promote something that I believe. But I want to say, if you need a conversation, let's have a conversation about it. Like, there's no way. Like, I want to tell you that we need to obey God. We need to obey God. We need to put Him first in every area of our life. And sometimes we just listen to some person and then we get so wayward and we get disorientated. And then it's like, hey, wait, 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 who have you been talking to? It's like, well, here's the Bible. How about read that? Because I don't think God's freaking out about what's going on right now. Man, he's dealt with a whole lot of other stuff. He's not freaking out about what's going on. And I don't think Christians should either. I, I, my, my whole thing is, man, I'm, I'm, I know that my uh, eternity is secure. So one day I'm going to die, whether it's, first, whether it's soon or not. I've just got to know that if if I've finished everything God wants me to do, then I'll probably leave this earth. But whenever I jump on a plane and I'm sort of scared that the plane's going down, I think, God, I thank you that you've got unfulfilled destiny in me and all of these people are safe. (laughs) So all of these people are safe because I'm on the plane. Like, you know, when I I sit down, clip up, and I'm like, you guys are sweet because God hasn't finished with me yet. All right? We're not going down, all right? (laughs) But it's a different level of perspective. When you're not freaking out about the natural things and you start thinking, okay, God, supernaturally, give me spirit eyes to see. Holy Spirit, every day, wake up. Holy Spirit, good morning. It's a new day. What is the new challenge you've got for me? What is the new adventure that we're going to go on today? And maybe you're already living there. Good. 
But maybe tomorrow morning when you wake up, just say, good morning, Holy Spirit. Not like he's some sort of mist in the distance and when I call him, he finally comes. No, because he's right here. He's always here. He's with us right now. He's there as our helper. He's been sent here to help us. Sometimes we only scream out when we need the help. But I, I say we need help all the time, even for the smallest decisions. <laughs> What's our, as equippers, our, our, our mandate, our vision or our mission statement is to equip people for life through faith in Jesus Christ. It's to teach people to obey God in your, in your um, career, in your family, in wherever you're going. It's to obey God in everything that you do. Later on in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, uh, verse 12, verse, uh, yeah, sorry. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9 and 10, it says this, My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. How many feel a bit weak all the time? That, guess what? It's good. Good news. Because that's where God's power is at work, in our weakness. Sometimes we're just afraid of weakness. But actually, that's where God needs us to be so he can show himself strong. Don't run away from weakness. Don't run away from those spaces that you feel in inadequate because that's where God wants to actually show himself strong. My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weakness. Don't go and post it all over Facebook. I've got, I've got all these weaknesses. Awesome, eh? Um, not, not that level. <laughs> So that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. Uh, how many have been through one of those categories? <laughs> Let me read that again. Hopefully you don't shed a tear when I'm reading it. Insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I'm, I'm, I think sometimes we run away from opportunities that God wants to show himself strong because maybe we are weak and we've seen ourselves that weak, but I think we need that paradigm shift again, that in that moment of weakness, we actually got to see through our spirit eyes and see that we are strong. We are stronger than we think. We have the ability to, to stamp on, on snakes and scorpions, those things that come against us. We actually have the authority and the power. And so those spiritual defibrillators are coming in right now and just waking you up. And God's just reminding you, come on, you're spirit man. Spirit man, wake up. Spirit man, come alive. Spirit man, go to the gym. Spirit man, start working it out. Start getting those spiritual muscles that you can actually, next time you go into an argument with someone, you actually see it from a different light. And you don't come with a tactic to try and tear them down. You come at a tactic to say, hey, what is the solution out of this? Where are we going with this? Because the enemy wants to come in and throw something your way and just to see how you, how you react. I, I think God's sitting here going, yeah, you can throw whatever you like at him. He's not gonna budge. He's got a heart about him that knows that I am his God. Knows that I am her God. I've got full faith that Carl's going to withstand everything that's been thrown against him. Because in his weakness, that's where I'm made strong. And I've got this godly confidence. Almost a godly arrogance to say to the devil, don't even try, mate. Don't even try. I may be young, but man, I've had some runs on the board with that devil. He tried to, he tried to gripple me and take me down at a young age. I was fearful because I used to see demons all the time. I was so scared. I used to sit in my bed and try and go to sleep. And every time I closed my eyes, I'd freak out for a couple of years of my life. And the enemy would try and sow it when I was like 12 or 13. And I used to cry. And my mom would come down, what's the matter? I can't sleep. There's too much going on. I can see these shadows in my room and they're freaking me out. My mom just said, why? <laughs> why? Why would you be scared of something? 
that you have authority over. And from a young age, I started to learn, okay, you can come at me. But as I spoke the name of Jesus, that thing had to leave. And I started to operate in my authority that God had given me as a 12-year-old. So what the enemy came for evil, actually God turned it around for good. And now I can stand here with a bold authority and lead people that are older than me and know that it's not about age. It's not about age or gender. It's about runs on the board. I'm like, God, you can, He can throw anything He wants at me and He knows my heart's towards Him. My, my heart is there, God. Move to Topo. I know you don't know anyone, but I want to do something significant. What, what did I say first? No. <laughs> My flesh came out and said, no. But then the wisdom of Tere said, hey, maybe we should go. And I'm like, God, she never wants to go anywhere. This must be you. <laughs> and we work through the battle of our humanity because nothing makes sense when God tells you what to do. You imagine being the ones that had to paint lamb's blood over the door like it doesn't make sense, right? But when the angel of death comes, you're covered. And what makes no sense in your physical, actually in the spirit realm means everything. That means protection. So stop trying to intellectualize all the things that are going on in your world because you're not gonna ever be able to understand what God is doing. Like I don't know if you can feel the Holy Spirit right now, but... Whew. There's, a, there's like a flood in this place right now. And I know we can go there on Sundays, but can we go there in a space during the week? Like I preach messages like this to myself about 17 times during the week. And I get to these moments where I think, okay, God, I'm gonna cry right now because your presence is here. Because I can't take you to a place that I've never been before. It's the same when we're worship leading. I'm not going, okay, God, where are we going right now? I've been there during the week. I'm God, okay, God, I've worked out, yep, you want to go to this chord because it's going to bring the anointing? Okay, we'll go there. And I'm working it out during the week. By failing to prepare, you prepare to fail. I wrote this statement slash question that is bugging me all week. It's gonna come up on the board, that last slide, Brooke. Maybe if your situation isn't changing, it's you that needs to change. Sometimes we put all our effort in trying to change our situation. And God's like, hello, hello. I'm not trying to change the situation. I'm trying to change you here. And we're too focused on the situation that God can't even change us. Change your stink mindset. Change your stink attitude. And you're going, see, God never comes through for me. I've been battling with this thing for so many years and God never comes through for me. Maybe because you haven't been the one that needs to change. Maybe God's knocking on the door of your heart and you're going, now nah, heal me first. Now nah, heal me first and then I'll give you my whole heart. Now God, if you just provide the million dollars, I'll, I'll serve you for all my days. Why? Because you're still holding resentment. You're still holding that, that toxic attitude within you that God actually can't use. Maybe if your situation isn't changing, it's you that needs to change. Why don't you just close your eyes? If you're perfect in the room, you don't need to listen, um, which is none of us. <laughs> but as I say, I, I preach these messages to me because I want to get better. I still struggle, yes, man. My life is still struggle street. 
when situations come at me, the first thing I do is act out in my natural. And I've got to remind myself that, no, I'm supernatural. When God is with me, I am supernatural. And I can operate in that spirit realm. But my first nature is human nature. And I come back to my situations and I think, okay, God, maybe you do need to change me first. Come on, right now, why don't you just start to think where God wants all of you and you're only giving him part. Because God is a gracious God. He's not going to force himself on you. He's not going to come in and take what you haven't given him, but you need to open up. He's not coming like the king and queen where you have to try and clean everything before they come. He comes with a bucket and a mop. And he says, let me in. No, I haven't cleaned up yet. Hey, I'm here to clean as well. I'm here to help you. I'm here to be the handyman to fix what's going on in here. You don't need to be perfect for God to come and work on the inside of you. Sometimes we're just trying to clean up and throw stuff under the bed and put stuff in the closet so that Jesus doesn't see. And then the first thing he goes is like, oh, what's in this closet? Bam, stuff everywhere. Mental breakdown. Come on, what are those things that it's not you dealing with them on your own, but allowing God to work on the inside of you, work them out, coming in. Come on, why don't we stand up all over this place? Why don't you stand to your feet? I want us to sing this chorus, holy, holy, Lord God Almighty. Come on, as we focus in on Him, as we take our attention off the situation or the sickness or the thing that you're facing right now, and you put your attention on Him, Come on, why don't you just lift your eyes right now? Why don't you just start to worship God in this place? Come on, if you need to come out of your seat, there's space down here. The altar is open for you to come and have a transaction with heaven. Come on, I understand that as we take our attention off ourselves and we put it on heaven right now. Come on, some of you may need to just cry and let it all out. the whole weight of heaven behind you this morning. Maybe you just need to repent. Not in the harsh term of a a word, but a a 180 degree. Repent just simply means to do a 180. See, pent comes from the word penthouse, which is up the top, pent being up. To re is to go back up. Repent means to just seek heaven, to go back up. Some of us have just been 
living at ground zero for too long that God's saying, hey, come up to the penthouse. Come up to the penthouse. Come up where you can see the view. Come up where you can live the best life you can live. So maybe you just need to do a little bit of repentance right now. Well, you allow God to just change your mindset, change your heart afresh, change what's going on on the inside. Come on, as a church, we're not here to just sing some songs. We're not here to just hear a great message. We're here to have a transaction with heaven. We're here to meet with the Almighty God that can bring lasting change, that can see significant things happen in our lives. So I just feel like maybe for the next couple of minutes, just allow heaven to touch your life. Come on, allow heaven to be released in your presence right now, Father. Right now we release your presence of fresh, God. Lord, come like a flood and saturate us right now. Saturate your presence right now, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Lord, release your presence of fresh. Release your anointing of fresh, Lord God.